Hello, I'm Simon Hurley, a 15-year-old card maker here at scrapbook.com, and in this lesson I'm super excited to teach you all about ink pads. I love ink pads and they're one of my favorite parts of crafting because you can get so many cool different effects with them on your cards. So down here on my desk I have a couple different swatches of the basic types of ink pads that we're using today. There's a ton out on the market and they all kind of do different results and will give you different effects in your crafting, so you kind of want to pick the right one that's for you. So first here, this is a dye ink. This is what I use the most, and I'm going to stamp it a little bit later, but it stamps into the cardstock and almost immediately dries to give you a nice smooth color and surface, and these are really quick and easy to use, and they give some pretty vibrant colors as well. Next up is the pigment ink. I don't use this one quite as often, but some people really enjoy it. It does take a little bit longer to dry, but still gives that fun, vibrant color, and it's more of a paint-like ink as well. This next ink is hybrid ink. This is kind of a mix between both pigment and dye inks, so it has some of the properties of both. It dries pretty quickly, and it kind of is paint-like though. You'll have to see when we stamp it a little bit later. And finally, here is the Distress Oxide or Distress Inks. Um, these create fun different effects on your backgrounds and cards, and you can create some cool watercolor effects because they're reactive with water, and they still do a pretty good job of stamping as well. Now we're gonna start our stamping. I'm just gonna stamp a couple little swatches so you can get an idea of the different types of inks. I'm gonna be using this Southwestern Charm stamp set because it has this nice solid cactus in it that can show some of the great results. So I'm just going to peel that stamp off of the backing. Then I'm going to take an acrylic block and stick my stamp right onto it. This will come off later and you can use these over and over to get some great results. Now I've already pre-cut some pieces of paper and written at the bottom the name and the brand of the ink. And you can use whatever size you want or whatever stamp you want to do swatches like this if you want to swatch your own inks at home. So I'm going to start off using the dye inks here. And I'm going to open this, and it's a nice felt pad in here, so it's not too squishy, which is nice, so it doesn't have too much give to it when you're stamping. So I'm going to add the ink onto this stamp. You can either add ink onto the stamp by dipping the stamp in, or you can take the ink pad and stamp it like this. They'll both give pretty great results. When I'm done inking up the stamp, you'll notice that it's kind of bubbly on the surface there, and it's kind of all around the stamp, but you can't see it too much. And then I'm just going to stamp it down onto the surface. And there you go, that's how the dye inks stamp there. Now if you give this a little bit of time, it'll smooth out into the cardstock and give a more solid impression like I showed in the example earlier. The dye inks take a little bit to set into the cardstock, but it is completely dry to the touch. Moving next on to the pigment ink, there's a lot of different inks on the market, but today I'm going to use the Doodlebug. So to ink this stamp up, you want to press pretty lightly on your stamp and kind of just give it a couple taps so that you get the ink right, nice and covered on the surface like this. Now it might get a little bit onto your acrylic black and this is tapping pretty lightly, but if you push your ink pad down too hard, you can get it all over the acrylic black and it kind of just makes a mess. So you just want to tap nice and light so that it gets all over your stamp and not too much on your acrylic black, but you can clean that up later. Now when it's on the stamp like this, it kind of covers the whole surface and looks more like a paint. And then you can stamp it down onto the surface. And this will give really nice crisp results right away. And it'll give a nice vibrant color as well. Now these inks don't dry quite as quickly and there's a little bit of time in there where you can kind of smear the color around and you don't really want that. So you can heat set this with a heat tool to make sure that it's nice and dry or throw some embossing powder over top of it and we'll go through that a little bit later in some lessons. Moving on to the hybrid inks, I'm going to write this one but you can print it out with a label maker like I did in the past and that gives it a nice finish or you can print it out and you can even write it on a typewriter. So I'm just going to write the brand and then I'm just going to write the color of the ink. And then you can keep it nice and organized if you make a lot of different swatches of your ink pads. So with this Hero Arts Hybrid ink, it is kind of like a dye ink pad where it has that nice foam surface and it doesn't have too much give to it. However, it does have some pigment qualities and it gives really vibrant colors, but it does have a quick drying time as well. So I'm going to ink up this stamp just like I would a dye ink. And it covers the surface and it gives kind of 
a medium in between kind of look with the dye and pigment inks. And then you can stamp that right down onto the surface. And this one needs a little bit of time and it will smooth into the cardstock just like the dye inks because you get a little bit of a splotchy result right at the beginning. But it gives that nice vibrant color and it's pretty much dry right away. The last ink that I'm going to be showing is the Distress Oxide inks. Now these can create some really fun results on your cards, but they're also pretty good to get a nice stamped image. They cover the stamp almost like a pigment ink would with a nice solid coverage. And then I can stamp that right down onto the cardstock. And you get a pretty nice stamped image. But what's really unique about these is that they're reactive with water. So you can get some really fun results when you spray it like this. It'll kind of bleed out and create some cool results on your cards. And I'm going to show more of this in just a little bit. Finally, I'm going to cover quickly the mini ink pads that a lot of different companies will sell. This is what they look like. Usually they come with four in a pack and they have all the same colors that the larger ink pads do, except they're in a tiny little ink pad. So four of these will equal one of these larger ink pads. Now the nice part about these is that it's nice and portable and you don't have to have as much room to collect a lot of different ink pads. So when you ink up a stamp, it takes a little bit longer to ink it up because there's more surface area. But you can just stamp it down on your card and get a really similar result. Now I'm just going to go quickly in depth about the Distress Oxides and what you can really do with them. I have a piece of watercolor cardstock here. This will just take the ink a little bit better than regular cardstock and it has a textured side and a smooth side to it. And then just regular cardstock will take the ink pretty similarly and I'll show you the differences in just a little bit. Starting off with the watercolor cardstock, I'm just going to take these inks and kind of smear them on a craft mat, which is a nice slick surface that'll take the ink pretty well and it'll sit right on top of it so you can pick that up with your cardstock. I'm going to kind of just smear the inks onto this craft mat. Then I'm just going to take a little mister bottle and I'm going to spray this and you'll see it kind of activate there. It gives a nice bright color when you spray it. And this makes it so you can kind of create a watercolor background. I'm just going to take the piece of cardstock and dip it right into that. And you can kind of smear it around a little bit. And this gives some really cool watercolor effects. Then to clean up this mess a little bit, I'm just going to grab my stamp chamois and wipe it up. This is a Ken Oliver craft mat and it makes for pretty easy cleanup. Now I'm going to create just a really similar background using just regular cardstock to show you how the inks are taken just a little bit differently. So I'm just smooshing them onto this craft mat. Then I'm going to spritz them again to activate them just a little bit. And then take my piece of cardstock and just kind of dip it in there and you can move it around a little bit. And you get a similar result. This one looks a little bit smoother and it doesn't take the color quite as well. So if you keep layering it up, it'll kind of peel the paper a little bit, whereas this takes a lot more water in it. Now we're going to put all of our swatches together. So if you want to do this at home to organize your inks, it's a great idea so you can see all the fun colors. So to do this, I'm just going to take a hole punch. I'm using the Fisker's hole puncher today and I'm going to hole punch the corner right here. So I'm going to line it up and then hole punch it. Now we're going to put it all together. So I'm just going to take a little piece of twine, but you could take a clip or a ring. And then I'm just going to tie it off here. And this makes it so you can flip through it like a little book and have all your colors here at once so you can look at them when you're creating. So once that's all tied, you can flip through all your different colors and see them and maybe even match them with a project. You might also want to label your ink pads so you can see them when they're in your storage and pull out the right colors. So here I have one of the ink pads and I just labeled the name using a label maker, but you can print it out or write it any way that you want to. And I just stick that right on the side of the ink pad. Then to get the color reference, I'm just going to take the ink pad and I'm just going to put a little bit of color down onto a sheet of paper. And then I can hole punch this one as well. And that just gives me a little sample of the color and I can pull that right out. And then I'm going to take some multi matte medium and I'm going to add a little bit of this right next to that label. And then I can add this little dot of color right down onto there. 
And this just gives the ink pad a little bit of a name and color reference, so if it's in your storage, you can see exactly what you're reaching for. This has been a lot of fun. I can't wait to see which color of ink pads you guys decide to use. And I would love to see all your pictures in the class gallery. See you guys soon.